All right, so let's pick up where we left off in the previous lesson where I completed my installation of the Anaconda distribution. And for this lesson, we'll need access to the Windows command prompt. Now, the way you can access that on Windows 10 is by going to your start menu and just searching for command prompt. And it should open a prompt that looks like this. And it's going to be something similar on older versions of, of Windows. Again, you can always Google how to find command prompt and uh, it'll take you to a screen like this. I'm just going to uh, enlarge it so we can see it on the entire screen and basically this is the command prompt it's called the terminal or the command line in other operating systems and it's basically a way that we can interact with our computer uh, using textual commands instead of the graphical interface that we're, we're used to and we're going to use the command prompt in order to both update all of the libraries in the anaconda distribution as well as confirm that we have a few additional ones that we will need throughout this course you may also find other lessons throughout this course that show you how to update or install these libraries at a later point. That's just to offer you a review in case you, you missed, or missed this section or kind of glossed over it. So uh, this is just trying to get all of the libraries that we need in one fell swoop at the beginning. So the first thing we need to do is to activate what's called our uh, root environment. So whenever Anaconda is installed, it creates a default environment called root. An environment is sort of like a sandbox, and the reason that Anaconda supports multiple environments or multiple sandboxes is so that different users can play around with, for example, different versions of Python, different versions of certain uh, libraries, see how they interplay with each other. When one is upgraded, how does it affect other libraries? How does it affect uh, other code? Now, for our purposes, we're not going to be dealing with multiple environments because we're not going to be testing code in different versions of, of Python or different versions of Pandas. We're always going to be working with the latest and greatest versions. But we still need to navigate to that default root environment that Anaconda has set up because that's basically our playground. That's basically our starting point. We need to we need to tell Pandas where we want to install and update all of the libraries, and they're currently in the this single root environment. So in order to get that, I want to uh, write a command in terminal or my command prompt that is activate root. So when I press enter to execute here, it's going to take a second and then we'll see that root has appeared in parentheses to the left here. And as soon as you see that, you're all good to go on your Windows machine. So just follow along with these commands. I'll try to explain them briefly, but it's not really that critical. Uh, to understand everything that's going on but basically we're just going to use a, a library within anaconda called conda this is a little bit a little bit confusing but one of the hundred libraries that's included in the anaconda distribution is a library called conda and conda is a library for updating and installing other python libraries so it's kind of funny in that sense but we're going to use conda which is that library and we're first going to tell it that we want to update essentially itself so we're going to write conda update conda so the way that this library works is we give the command to, to reference the library, which is conda. Then what we want to do, which is update, and then we tell it what library we want to update. In this case, it's itself. So I'm just going to press enter here. It's basically querying the internet and saying you may have a couple packages that are out of date or that need to be downloaded. The basic way to proceed through this lesson when you're following along is whenever you get a prompt that looks like this that says, would you like to proceed Y or N for yes or no? If you ever receive a prompt like that, just always enter Y and press enter and that's going to ensure that it's installed and or updated. So I'm just going to execute this with Y. You may see something different. If you see something that says all of these packages are installed and up to date, then you're all good to go. But still follow along with all of the commands I do. And just if you ever run into that uh, prompt, just always enter Y or N. So I'm just going to execute the last command just to see what happens this time around. If I do the exact same thing, this time you can see I'm going to get a message that says, all requested packages already installed. And if you get this message, it doesn't just mean that they're installed, it also means that they're up to date. So you can see the difference between when I wrote, when I ran this command just a moment ago and right here is right now it's up to date. So um, basically the way that this works is you essentially uh, write conda followed by update, followed by the name of a library that you want to update. So for example, let's say I want to do pandas. I can write pandas and it's going to query a server on the internet and tell me whether my version of pandas can be updated. And you'll see right here that in fact it can be. Right here we'll see pandas, and my current installed version is 0.18.1, and the latest version that it can install is 0.19.0. Keep in mind that your numbers here may differ, may differ, they most certainly will if you're watching this at a later date. Your version of pandas will be more ahead in the future. But if you ever run this command and you see that there are, are newer versions, all you have to do is basically just press Y here again and press enter and it's going to download the latest version. So for example, uh, you'll also see that this anaconda thing comes up uh, right above the pandas line even though we only requested to update pandas. Now as you may have guessed, the reason this is so is because if any other libraries uh, that pandas needs to run on are also out of date, 
Conda is going to offer to update them as well. So all of the dependencies are going to be upgraded as well. So in this case, we need to also upgrade Anaconda. So once again, just placing placing a Y whenever we get that proceed prompt, pressing uh, the enter key, it's going to fetch them and uh, unpack them and download them and install the latest version of Pandas. Now you may be thinking, we have a hundred different libraries within um, my distribution. How the heck are we going to write this conda update command and list every single library, especially all the ones that we really don't need throughout this course? Well, there is a helpful command that basically updates everything, and that's what I want to write, run now. So I'm going to do conda update, which is what we've done so far. But after this, after a space, I'm not going to write a name of the library like we did conda and pandas just a moment ago. I'm going to write two dashes and the word all. And predictably, what this is going to do is query the server for every uh, package that we have installed on our local computer. And it's going to say, here are all the following packages that are currently out of date. You can see one of them, for example, is NumPy, which is what Pandas is dependent on to run. So at this point, I can just enter Y, press Enter, and it's going to download and update basically all of the packages within my distribution. So if you're like me and you kind of always want to keep things up to date, what I can recommend is opening the command prompt maybe once a month, maybe once every two weeks, and just running that conda update dash dash all command. Uh, and that will just ensure that you're always working with the latest and greatest version of Pandas. Uh, of course, as Pandas is updated, you have things like bug fixes, you have things like efficiency imp improvements, and of course, new features, new formulas. So the library keeps growing like any software program does. So it is a good idea to kind of come in here and either run conda update Pandas or conda update all, which kind of makes sure that everything is, is its latest and greatest version. So after this part is done, what I'm actually going to do is switch from my conda update command to a new command called conda install. And what that's going to do is basically install a couple libraries that may or may not be missing. What's great about conda install is that if the library is already installed, it's not going to run into any kind of issue. It's just going to tell you, hey, this is already found. It's already local. It, you already have it installed. Uh, there's going to be no, no error. So you can use that conda install command safely. It's not going to overwrite anything like that. So once this is all done and I'm back to my prompt, I can see the flashing cursor here. I'm going to do conda, but instead of update, this time around I'm going to, I'm going to use the command install. So the first library I want to make sure we have is called markdown. So I'm going to run this command. And let's see what it gives us. You can see the following new packages will be installed, which means Markdown is missing. And obviously when it installs a new package, it automatically installs the latest version. So you don't need to run conda update Markdown after this. But I'm just going to press Y as we do at every proceed prompt. And it's done. Let's try the next command, which is going to be conda install numexpr. And these are basically, this library and the next one are libraries that are for optimization and speed efficiencies in Pandas behind the scenes. You can see that this requested package has already been installed and is up to date. Some of these are included in um, the Anaconda distribution, some are not, so I always want to play it safe by running the command just in case. And similarly, I'm going to do conda install bottleneck, no spaces there. That's yet another library for speed and optimization. You can see it's also requested this requested package is already installed and up to date, so we're all good on those. Finally, I want to install a couple of libraries that we will need later throughout the course. Later in the course, I'll also have videos to show you how to get these libraries if you missed out on this section. But for now, since we're at the command prompt anyway, we can go ahead and install them. So let's do conda install pandas dash data reader. And that data reader is all one word. And basically, this is a library that we'll use much later in the course to fetch financial data from the internet. So when I uh, download this, we'll get another prompt. Here's the library. Here's another library that it needs to run. Press Y to update. And now you have the pandas data reader library installed. And finally, let's conclude with conda install xlsx writer. And what this is for is basically uh, opening and writing to Excel files. And you can see that it says all requested packages already installed. And I also actually forgot one other thing I want to do with Excel conda install. Uh, open py excel. I'm just making sure that all these libraries are installed so we don't run into any issues later. But as we can see, this one is also installed at the location. So uh, if you run all of these commands, there will, there will be no bugs. Um, even if you already have them installed, it's just a waste of 30 seconds. But you, you know that they're there, they're in the Anaconda folder, and they're ready to go. So once you've executed all the commands in this lesson, you have basically updated all of the libraries. They're all good to go. And we're ready to get started with actually working with our 
uh, Anaconda and the Jupyter Navigator. So in the next lesson, I'll take you through the process of launching a new Jupyter Notebook and show you a little bit about how it's executed, how we save it, how we close out of it, how we close out of the server that's going to be running it, and so on. So I'll see you in the next lesson, which will be the final one in our Windows Setup Tutorials.